any one of us can suffer from addictions, one of the addictions that Christians can uh, succumb to is being addicted to retaliation. So I want to share one scripture today that helps us learn how to break away, how to uh, how to overcome uh, an addiction to retaliation. Uh, so when we think about this uh, series on processing any pain that is unprocessed, meaning the pain is just still there and it's affecting us and maybe we're ignoring it or uh, suppressing it, uh, but it, it is there's repercussions from it. Uh, so much of our pain comes from other people. It comes from those relationships where uh, you know, what could have been, what should have been, what used to be a good relationship uh, now is not no longer a close relationship, uh, albeit a family member, uh, a, a friend from church. Uh, and so uh, Romans chapter 12 uh, speaks to this because uh, what can happen is we can find ourselves in this this cycle of retaliation and this cycle of entanglements, emotional entanglements, and it's beyond unhealthy. It becomes toxic. It becomes an obsession where we obsess over the situation and we think about, you know, how are we going to respond and how can we get them back? And and uh, it's, it, it's just so unhealthy. So in Romans chapter 12 and verse 14, Paul tells us what to do and then he gets to how to do it. He says in verse 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. So we're talking about something that's that's very unhealthy. So it's not just that someone's not a friend of ours anymore or, or that they're neutral. They are a foe. They are out to get us. And he says to actually bless those people, to bless and to do not curse. How in the world am I going to do it? Because it hurts so much the things they're saying, the things they're posting, the digs that they make, uh, the way that they're maybe taking away other friends from us. So then here's what he says, uh, verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. So he talks about humbling ourselves, and then here is what we do in that posture. Verse 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Verse 18, here's how you take control of your life and the situation. He says, if it is possible, as far as depends on you, live at peace with everyone. You might be sitting here listening to this and thinking, I have tried everything. I've explored so many options. I've tried to talk to the person. I've tried to overlook offenses. I've been forgiving. I've, I've taken the high road. I've been mature. Paul identifies with you here, he says, as much as depends on you. For any relationship to have intimacy and to be a, a good uh, relationship where both are giving to the situation, it takes both parties, whether that's a marriage or any other relationship. So he says here, as much as depends on you. So if you sit here and say, I have exhausted everything, and at this point I am just addicted to retaliation, this is how you get out of it. You say, I have tried everything that I can do, and I'm still willing, I'm available, but at this point uh, I am not going to be emotionally entangled with this other person. And so he says, verse 19, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Hey, release control to say, I don't have to get this person back. I don't have to keep score. Uh, God gives me this tool and it's called forgiveness. And I am going to experience freedom. I'm going to release this person. This person, they can do whatever they're going to do. Uh, but I am no longer going to be vulnerable and susceptible to pain in this situation. I am going to overcome it, and I am no longer going to be about retaliation. And he says, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Uh, you're actually going to flip the script on the person because the person is not going to have a bucket to put it in because you are no longer 
in the cycle. They make a dig on you, you make a dig on them. You know, they say something to somebody, you say something. You no longer are going to criticize them. You are no longer going to persecute or, or, or any of those uh, negative reactions uh, that you are now forgiving. You are no longer going to be entangled with whatever the drama is uh, for the month or, or the week or the day. And, and so here's what he finally says, verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And so you will start to experience healing as you do this and you focus on all the, the relationships in your life where there is true harmony, true peace, starting with your relationship with God and the peace that you have with him and then you come at that relationship with peace that peace is restored there whether or not that person ever changes or the relationship ever gets back where it used to be you are at peace you have processed the pain you are looking squarely at current pain that is there and it hurts it stings you know it, it used to be such a good relationship uh, you long for it to be a good relationship again, and that can happen. That can happen, but again, it's up to the other person to do their part. You must control what you can. As far as it depends on you, you live at peace with all people, and then you let the chips fall where they may. You leave the rest of it to God and to the other person. You are controlling what you can but don't stay in that place of addiction to retaliation to repaying to being entangled in this obsession you say god i'm getting out of this maybe you need to journal at a minimum pray about it i encourage you as soon as you can and watching this video right now if you can reread these verses romans 12 14 to 21 reread them and then pray about it and say god I want to you know, process this pain and I want out of this addiction.